The Sixers are eyeing the six seed. It's not over, y'all. It's definitely not over. They may not be in the playing game. You are locked on 76ers, your daily Philadelphia 76ers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making Locked On 76ers your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's 150 bucks, win or lose. So go visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Hello, I'm Keith Pompey, right next to my right-hand man, John Mitchell. We are the co-hosts of Locked On 76ers. Today, we got a lot to talk about. First things first, the Sixers have the inside track to the sixth seed. Yep, the inside track to the sixth seed. So we'll talk about that in the first segment. In the second segment, Joel Embiid says that he wants to play as many minutes as possible to get back in the optimum game shape. So we'll talk about that. Good stuff. And then in the third segment is DeAnthony Melton. How do the 76ers plan to utilize him moving forward? Are they going to keep him coming off the bench? Is he going to go back to being the starting guard right next to Tyrese Maxey? Because, you know, let's face it. You know, he could his defense could probably help them in the postseason. So we'll talk about all that. Now, Mitch. What's up, Keith? Talking about the playoffs. Right now, you look at it. The Orlando Magic was a hot team. Right now, they seem to be just be sliding there like what number the number uh five in the standings. Got boat, but, Got boat race last night. Exactly. And they lost two games. So now the Orlando Magic, they have a one game lead over the 76ers, just one game ahead of them. If the if 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 the Sixers beat them on Friday, tomorrow, then all of a sudden they they both win the final game or whatever. The Sixers will have the same record as them. And then head to head tiebreaker, the 76ers. The 76ers will become the sixth seed. Orlando will slide to number seven in the playing game. So when you look at that, you say to yourself, wow, this yeah. is great news for the Sixers. Yeah. And, you know, and unfortunately for Orlando, you know, you wonder, like, how much do they have? I mean, they got boat raced by the Houston Rockets on, on Tuesday. On Wednesday, they were boat raced by the Milwaukee Bucks. And the crazy part is it was a Bucks team. That was kind of sort of like you, you're you figuring, like, if we're going to get them, we can get them tonight. This is we, the night to get them. We, we, Giannis not there. Now, here's the thing. After they play the Sixers, they got to go back and play the Milwaukee Bucks again. Now, the Bucks may, be re- may rest players in that game and everything mm-hmm. just because they'll probably lock up this the second seed at that particular point. But the Sixers, man. Everything is setting up great for them right about now. Yeah, man. You know, all they have to do is handle their business. They, you know, they that they should beat Orlando on a Friday night with the playoffs right in the offing. You know, Orlando has been playing like a sacrificial lamb. I mean, the effort they put on last night against Milwaukee, you're like, come on now. You know, there's no 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 Giannis, and y'all still can't come up with a better effort than that. You know, so um yeah, I, I think uh, it's it's uh, the, the Sixers could be, you know, it's, it's pick your. What do you want? You want the seven seed and you want a limping Milwaukee team, or do you want the, the six seed and get you know more rest time, number one, or more conditioning time for Joel, which we'll talk about later. Um, and do you you know, or, or do you get the Knicks? You know, who I think have been overrated and 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 they're you know I, I like what they have, but you know I, th- I think the Sixers. 
I can see the Sixers beating either one of those teams in that position. So it's like, you know, which what do you want in the first round? You know, of course the Sixers, you know, we let's not get greedy, you know, acknowledging that they got a six game winning streak, but you know, go out there. The Sixers gotta handle their business. You know, you got to beat Orlando, you know, to give yourself the option. You know, you've got to beat Orlando and, and you gotta beat Brooklyn. You gotta win both games. You gotta close the season matching your longest win streak of the season for people to say, okay, you seriously ready. Uh, and 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 they look like the team that, you, that can and will that can do it. You know, they look if they leg on if they lay an egg on Friday, it'll be horrific. Yeah, it, it, yeah, it'll be, it, but it, it'll be so sixer, <laughs> right? I mean, I hate to say that, and I hate to be that dude, but it'll be so. Oh, sixer. I brought my cup out for him today, man. Yeah, it'll, be, it'll be so sixers. Of I know those. you got the purple violet color on, man, but root for the red, and, the red, white, and blue. <laughs> Uh, I'm rooting for America. <laughs> we all, we all got to root for America, no matter how good or how bad it gets. <laughs> nah, yeah, I'll, I'll leave that up to you. you. People could call me a hater by doing that, but no, nah, you're a beat writer. You're, you're the beat yeah. writer, man. You, you're, yeah, I can't. you are intimately I can't. connected. Yeah. To that team. I can't. I can't do that. I can't. I'm not one of those dudes. Like I and I'll, t- <laughs> I'll tell you a story about my my experience on a beat where I saw people like. Hey, cheering, cheering, and I'm like, "Yo, dude, sit down. You ain't supposed to do. We supposed to cover the team, not cheer for the team." Hey, one, I, I give you a quick story about an old guy. Did you know Lacey Banks? who used to work for the Chicago uh, Tribune. Nah, he used to do that. Man, Lacey, one time Michael Jordan hit a game winning free throw, and they had Lacey. He was a beat writer, and Lacey was standing up in the picture. They put in the paper cheering. <laughs> for real, wow. He was a character, man. Rest <laughs> in peace, Lacey Banks. So look, so whenever they lost, he was in a bad mood, right? He was, he was MJ, man. He was MJ's guy. MJ loved him. Man. Oh, of course. Oh, okay. Yeah, he, yeah. MJ, MJ treated Lacey Banks. That's, I mean, it's like inside basketball, but he loved, he loved him some Lacey Banks. <laughs> okay, I gotta look the guy up. I gotta look him up. So, so anyway, here's the deal, y'all. So when we look at it, and the reason why we said the Knicks. The Knicks clinched the playoff spot right now. So the Knicks are in third place with a 47 and 32 record. The Cleveland Cavaliers are in fourth with 43, I mean, excuse me, 47 and 33. And then you have Orlando and Indiana tied with this bet with the same record is 46 and 34. But Orlando owns the tiebreaker. So that's the reason why they're ahead of them, right? Mm-hmm. And the Sixers are right behind them. So if you're basically, I don't know if you're the Indiana Pacers who you're saying, come on, Philly, win, win, win. Because if you're the Pacers, you're probably thinking, man, I'd rather play the Knicks than than uh, than, than play like Cleveland or somebody. Mm-hmm. But the way Cleveland's been playing, it doesn't matter. So, yeah. you know what I mean? So, whereas out, that's why we're saying the Sixers could play the Knicks if they get the sixth seed. But at the same time, you know, it's wide open, y'all, because Cleveland's only a game back. So if Cleveland, you know, wins or or, or the Knicks take a loss, you know, you never know what's going to happen. Now, the Knicks, assuming that the Knicks have, what, a couple games left, more or they have, or they have one more game uh, than, than Cleveland does. So it's going to be one of those things. But I'm here to tell you, things look good for the 76ers. Um, me personally, if I'm the 76ers, and and you talked about it a little bit, and we'll allude more to Joel and B the second segment. But if I'm the 76ers with with all these guys coming back and you have Joel and B and and now I'm playing, Kyle Lowry has only hasn't practiced with him a lot. Um mm-hmm. campaign hasn't practiced with him a lot. You know, Tobias Harris needs to get back in rhythm. He's been injured, and when he played, the Sixers, as much as you know, everybody say, yeah, you learn how to play in games. Nah, they need a week of practice, man. They need yeah. a serious week of practice to get themselves together. So right now, that has to be the focus. Not only that, you know, Tyrese Maxey has been playing with this hip situation. I mean, dropping mm-hmm. points. So is it how you say to yourself, how bad is it bothering? How bad is it? Yeah. yeah, how bad is it? You know, how bad is um, uh, Kyle Lowry's, you know, knee and all that other stuff? You know, but again. They need some practice time. They yeah. need to get on the court, and they need to become a better team. That's what they need. And and you know, hey, get Joel Embiid out there 
have them doing whatever, you know, and, and everything work out because I do think they have a chance. But I'd rather them, if I'm the Sixers, I'd rather have a week to practice than going to play, uh, than, than, than playing, uh, who is it, uh, uh, the Miami Heat, Miami Heat on Tuesday. Who looked at, who looked miserable right now. But um, but yeah, let's 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 talk about Nissan. Are you the kind of driver that likes to push things a little further? Ever wonder what adventure could be around the next corner? Our friends at Nissan have a lineup of SUVs with the capabilities to take your adventure to the next level. Let's take a look at the 2024 Nissan Pathfinder. The Pathfinder has room for up to eight, an expansive cargo capacity, and advanced available 4x4 capability. With 284 horsepower and up to 6,000 pounds of towing, when adventure calls, the Pathfinder is there to answer. But what about the 2024 Nissan Armada? The 2024 Nissan Armada will change what you expect from a full-size SUV. Picture a rugged 4x4 that can seat up to 8 in first-class luxury and style. Tow bigger and explore further in the 2024. 24 Nissan Armada. So take the Nissan Pathfinder with a Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. Shop NissanUSA.com. Do it today, folks. Do it today. Are you watching Fox Sports or ESPN on your TV all day? I don't know why you would do that. You have to turn down volume with all that shouting. Make the switch to Locked On Sports today, a free 24-7 sports streaming channel program for you every day to bring you the biggest stories without all the hollering and screaming. Locked On Sports today brings you can't-miss analysis, opinions, and news, streaming 24-7 on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every single solitary day. Do it today, folks. Do it today. Definitely do it today, right? So here's the deal. Um, you know, we, we talk about Joel, and, and Joel was asked uh, after Tuesday's game about, um, you know, how do you plan to get in, in the shape? And conditioning, you know, over heading into the playoffs, and he said by playing, you mm -hmm. know, he 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 played as he had thirty something, played thirty five minutes, I believe, the past the second, I mean, the last game that was the most minutes that he played, and he would like to play more minutes, if not at least forty, mm -hmm. if the games aren't blowouts, because if they're blowouts, then all of a sudden he knows that the coach is going to take him out and and, and things like that. Um, but, you know, he mentioned that, you know, he hasn't really been, I mean, because of his, you know, reconditioning, getting back, you know, he hasn't been getting a lot of time on the court outside of that. Right. So this is how he's going to get it. And, and, and I agree. I mean, you know, that's the best thing for him is to play these minutes absolutely, to, to get his lungs up because you know it, man, you know, practice is great and you running up and down the court and this and that, but it never it's never not like game reps. Right. You right. need those game reps. Um, so I, yeah, I do well, feel like that's the best. And the one thing I was kind of weird because, huh? No, the, yeah, the, no, the, I, the I, one I, thing I. Yeah, I, I kind of got the impression you, you froze on me, Keith, but I got, I kind of, yeah, I kind of got the impression. The impression that um, when I was watching the Detroit game, you know, I mean, that game changed. It turned into a route. I mean, they they BS a little bit in the third quarter. But when the fourth quarter came around, they they, they handled their business. And I, I I started wondering myself. And that was after, you know, Joel had that little moment where, you know, he landed funny on his on his leg. I think it was his left leg, too, if I'm not mistaken. I was saying, you know, maybe this is where Nick Nurse might need to pull him out of the game. And he left him in there. And, and at that point, I said, well, this is, you know, Joel's telling him that I'm OK. I'm OK. And he Lord knows he knows at this point in his career to, to say when he's OK and when he's not. 
And I, I think they said, okay, well, you know, this is all about the conditioning and running, man. We got to get you, you know, we, we'll get you up and down this court. You know, at, at that point, I said, you know, Joel should probably settle into more of a, a facilitating role, you know, up in that high post, you know, clapping for the ball, you know, and drawing a double team. Um, but I like, you know, and I, I, like, I appreciate the piece you wrote today about that because, let's face it, like you said, his rhythm, he hasn't, you know, it, it, you know, he does, hasn't lost any of his rhythm, um, and and he looks like he has his time. And so the big thing is the conditioning, you know, and, and that could be the point where you do say, you know, um, let's, you know, let's get that six spot if we can get it, and, and they can, um, and, and get a week to rest and just, you know, to let, let the body heal or recover or become even more used to playing. But like, like you said, the biggest thing is you don't you can't replicate the reps that you get up and down the court in actual game time. You can't replicate that in practice. Um, so and, you know, and to me, it's a sign of it's, it's, it's more maturity. Joel has seemed to be more mature in every answer. Now I know you know you you can't reveal this, but as a beat writer, you see some stuff that you know, and, and being there more than anybody else in the Philadelphia media, you see some things. Uh, that other people aren't going to see and people are going to tell you some things. Um, so you see how he may look. Uh, but, you know, right now, if he is getting the, the you know, he's, he's got to get his wind up, you know, he's got to get his wind up. Uh, and, and I, and I like, you know, I like, I like his approach to this. It's, it's a sign of his maturity. Um, and, 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 you know, and maybe I shouldn't be talking about him because he is 30 years old. So, you know, maybe I need to stop talking about his maturity. But I, I, I like what's coming out of his mouth, and I like the fact that he is focusing on the fact that, yeah, I got it. You know, the one thing that's lagging is my is my wind, and he's talking about it. Yeah, I mean, you look at it, and, and you know, that's the one thing. But you look at Yeah, you, you froze on me again. You, you good? Go, go ahead. I'm sorry, Q. Go ahead. Um. The, the the one thing um the, the the one thing that he came back and and you look at it and it's uh you know his first game back he played 29 minutes he had uh 24 points the, the second game he played 33 minutes he had 29 points then he played 23 uh 30 and then he played uh 36 minutes and he had 37 points so in that last game a lot of people were saying Joel looked like he was back, like he's back, mm -hmm. ready. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like he looked back when he played the 23. I mean, be honest with you, he, I felt like the way he looked, he never really left. It was just a matter that's of right. being conditioned. So that's what I see, Keith. You know, yeah. I, I, I don't, I don't, I, you know, I think there's new narratives have to be created, but it's, you know, the win is the thing that's got to get up. Everything else is still there. Yeah. And, and everything is there. And, and like, it just seems like, once that comes back, he's going to be better. And I'm going to be honest. When you looked at him, when you saw, if we didn't get know how vital Joel was to this team's success, um, how much he needs to be on the floor when he left, you really quickly realized that against the Spurs. Because yeah. as good as, as much as I want to say, give shout out to Tyrese Maxey for scoring 52 points, I want to shout out Ricky Council for coming in and playing great. Uh, uh, Nico Patoon for hitting those threes. Mm -hmm. KJ Martin for being a muscle, like playing hard. Dog, it shouldn't have come to that. I mean, at the same time, they, that's a team that's one of the worst teams in the league, the worst team in the Western Conference, a team that's tanking. And I feel like that let us know like how the Sixers lose a lot without Joel Embiid. Yeah. So the key is, and especially in the playoffs, you're going to need him out there to play a lot of minutes. Now I do love with, with um, Paul Reed has been giving us or giving the Sixers since Embiid has been back. Like he's coming mm -hmm. in, providing energy, blocking shots, mm -hmm. running rim to rim, getting his points, doing all those things, but he's doing it in a limited minutes type of thing right. as it goes up. So I honestly believe that they Sixers need Joel Embiid to be conditioned and everything. And you know what? If not, they, they could get in trouble because right now the playoffs is more of a half-court game. But right now I can see teams saying, you know what? 
our game plan is until Joel gets in shape, running, we're gonna run, yeah. run, yeah. run, and then in the fourth <laughs> quarter, we're going to trap, trap, yeah. trap, Maxi, and then guess what? Nobody else we feel like can beat us. Right. So, that's where they are, man, in my opinion. That's where they are. No, it's kind of hard to argue with that, man. That's an astute observation. You know, and, and another thing, I mean, just just pick on something real quickly. Has, has there ever been more of an argument? I know he's not going to meet the 65-game threshold, but has there ever been more of an argument for a guy's MVP by his absence from the lineup and when they bring him back? You know, you see, you see what he's doing. I mean, he's really made a significant difference. So, but right now, let's, let's talk about FanDuel, somebody who's making a significant difference. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball's in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every single solitary game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, 50 bucks, win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks. All on the app that is safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. You know, the thing about that is, you know, we, we talk about, you know, FanDuel. We talk about a lot of other different things. Um, and the one thing that I could see guys saying is a player that they want to talk about or maybe even bet on is like, yo, DeAnthony Melton. How many minutes is he going to do? What is he going to do? You know, things like that. Um, I mean, is he going to play? What What is his numbers going to be like? I mean, even if it's not FanDuel, but I'm just saying he's just that vital. The big question to me, Mitch, is moving forward, how do the Sixers utilize him? I mean, here's a guy he hasn't played in a while, so he has to get his conditioning up yeah. as well, just like Joel. But also, you know, you like what Kyle Lowry does in regards to ball handling. But let's be honest, recently Kyle Lowry has been off the ball a lot, and but he's been orchestrating where they go, like go here, go there. But the thing about it is you're going to need somebody in the playoffs that's going to be able to lock other people down. And Melton, before he was injured, he was, what, second in the league in steals. He kind of led the league in deflections. He has real long arms and a reach, right? You know, he can knock down an open shot. So the question mark is how do you utilize him? Do you want him to come off the bench to continue to provide depth? Or do you want Kyle to come off the bench as a backup point guard, right? You know, Kelly Oubre has been playing phenomenal defense. Yeah. You could say, well, we'll have Kelly to be our defensive stopper, right? But at the same time, are you going to need, are you going to rely heavily on the points that Maxi is giving you? Or do you want somebody else out there to keep the defense honest a little bit? You know, I think they don't really need another score in that lineup because when you look at it, Kelly Oubre has shown what he can do. Tobias, we know what he yeah. can do when he's cooking. You got Joel, you got Maxi. So my big question to you is, if you're Nick Nurse, do you keep this guy coming off the bench, which might be the best thing because of as far as reacclimating this guy because he missed so much time? Or are you looking at it and saying, hey, Kyle, you know what? We want you to be our backup point guard as opposed to being a veteran floor leader now I, I you can make two arguments for both both decisions well i mean the one good element here is that you do have you know kyle lowry is a consummate professional and you know at 38 kyle lowry i don't think is gonna you know is it's not one to to whine about you know how coaches utilizing him particularly after he was summarily dismissed by the Miami Dolphins, the Miami uh, Heat's finished. Um, if you look at the Anthony Melton, you're talking, you know, they, they, the, my biggest, one of my biggest questions um, is, is the 76 perimeter defense. It's, you know, they, they're, I wouldn't call them Lilliputians along, you know, the perimeter defensively, but they're small. 
you know, and, and, and as good as Maxie has been, he's a suspect defender. Um, you know, you ha- in, in the playoffs, let's, let's face it, you're going to have to play DeAnthony Melton. You know, I mean, I know he missed the majority of the second half of the season after the New Year's, um, you know, with, with those back issues. But you're going to have to play him. He's going to have to be used because you're going to run into bigger guards, uh, you know, who, who, who you're going to have to defend. And he's the most qualified defender among those players, to, you know, to be that guy. And, uh, and and Nick Nurse knows that. Now, do you start him or not? You know, I, you know, he, you, you, you got to go by feel. I mean, he'll make a decision. Obviously, um, they're 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 competent in the backcourt, um, and so it just all depends on how you want to utilize it. I mean, where's his conditioning going to be? Uh, he's, you know, he, uh, you know, because it was a back and not a knee like Covington, he could probably do some more conditioning as he recovers you know, um, from, um, from his injury, but that's what, that's, that's a good, that's, I think that might be the biggest question going in because this is a guy who has started a few on many occasions. He's he's a guy who at the start of this season was your best perimeter defender. So, uh, you know, that's a decision. It's it's a luxury to have to make that decision. And it's also a luxury to have a guy like Kyle Lowry, who, as we see, is going to do whatever it takes. You know, he's, Back in his hometown, he's going to do what's right for the team, um, and I'm not saying I'm not saying that to set up say he's coming off the bench. But you're right there when you point that you know a lot of times Kyle is out there and he's not on the ball, which stunned me. And kudos to Nick Nurse because I was telling my boys who were watching the game, you know, I'm like, give it up, Tyrese, give it to Kyle, and 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 not nah, you know Kyle waves him off and says, go ahead. So um, you know, it's just and they're they're in a good situation. It's, it's a good. You know, as they say, when you, use this, you got more wide receivers or more running backs than you need. That's kind of how they are right there. But they do need his size in the playoffs. They absolutely need his size in the playoffs. Yeah, they do. And, and the thing is, I will say this. He did look – I liked his activity um, in the game on Tuesday. Now, he, 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 he looked active. He was aggressive. Now, his shot wasn't falling. But that's mm-hmm. something that you expect, right? I mean, a you know, guy hasn't played in a while. The first game, you got to get your rhythm back, your shooting stroke back. Yeah. So it's, the things happen. It's like live bullets. Like now it's like real. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's kind of big. Yeah. So, so I, I think that will come. But the thing, but at the same time, let's be 100. We ain't looking. To, if I'm the Sixers, I'm not looking for uh, DeAnthony Melton. They drop 30. I'm not looking for him to do this and that now. Hit a couple open threes. That's what I want you to do. But at right. the same time, it's like you on the floor because defense, perimeter. Like right now, we need to shore up the perimeter defense. We got Kelly Oubre, who deserves yeah. to remain in there, at, but he'll probably play the three. And then you have um, somebody else that we need that's going to be able to be a solid perimeter uh, defender. And then you got Tobias at the four. And then you got Joel at the five, and Joel will keep everything in front of him. So to me, that's what you need. Now, again, even if he doesn't start, that's still going to be his role. Come in yeah. there and do those things. So, you know, it's just a matter, you know, Nick Nurse is a tough decision on how things are going to go. Um, we'll see. You know, Kyle, he's a leader of this team. He makes them better just by his presence. And mm-hmm. the one thing that I will say about Kyle Lowry that really impressed me is, there's been times in the past where they had veteran guys come in with the cachet, if not better than Kyle, talking about the All-Stars, you know, Olympians, all this and that, mm-hmm. James Harden, a couple other dudes that I'll say that when the team was on the road and them brothers weren't playing, they weren't there. Like, sometimes they would be there, but Kyle, you always look around and you say, well, I wonder if Kyle flew back to Philly or if he went to Miami to be with his family. Nah. He's right there on the bench, cheering on his team, doing whatever he can. He's a consummate leader, a consummate professional, and so his shout out. That's what you need. Hmm? Shout out to shout out to North Philly, man. North Philly, stand up, Don Staley, stand up. You yeah. know, Kyle Lowry, stand up. So you well, know, it's just real. yeah, it's yeah. So, give me, you're absolutely right, man. I mean, I, James Harden would vanish, man. A lot of people were, and James yeah. wasn't the only one, dude. It's been in the past where the Sixers had games. Dudes was at, even at home games, man. Like, you know, you would go there, like, oh, Ben Simmons ain't playing? 
He wasn't at the yeah. arena. And I mean, Joel at times was that same way. All of them. So it was, it was, it was different, man. It was a different type of vibe. You know, yeah. like remember when Markel folks got, but he went away. He yeah. went away. He was gone yeah. from the team for months. So he had no cachet. <laughs> it's, it's just different. Now again, they said he was seeing doctors and all that, but I'm saying this to say that Kyle yeah. has been around and he's been vocal. And you know, before we go, y'all, we we need to talk to y'all about. Um, um, what Locked On has launched. You know, Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, and now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channel app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7, covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On Plus, our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channel app. And for my man Mitch, I would like to say deuces. <laughs> so, you know, I would like to say thank y'all for listening, and we hope y'all have a blessed day. Make this the start of a blessed weekend early. Today is Thursday, but, you know, have it. And, and look, tomorrow, keep your eyes glued to the TV, man. The Sixers game is going to be an important game for them to win. So we would like to say thanks for listening and make sure y'all have a great day. Peace. Yeah, y'all.